They're called the Courage to Come Back Awards, and for good reason. They're given to people who've overcome the kind of adversity that most of us can't even imagine. Tonight, part three of our series on this year's Remarkable Winners. Andy Fior has come back from terrifying episodes of schizophrenia and drug addiction. So successfully, he's using his skills as a filmmaker to help others. Here's Linda Aylesworth. Andy Fiore is a filmmaker on a mission. He's raising awareness about Vancouver's downtown east side by showing more than its grimy facade and delving into the lives of the people who call it home. Uh, uh, go to the truck and then I'll give you the cue. I'll just go like this. What I try to do is to show them as real people uh, who, and, and show everybody that these are people just like you. Uh, they've fallen on bad times. Andy knows all about bad times. His troubles began when he was just a little boy. His childhood may have looked idyllic, but he had a terrible secret not even his family knew about, something that ate at his soul and at his mind. So I'm the little child and I'm being sexually abused. Now, at some point, I realize this is not normal. And so in order to cope, my mind split. So there was that reality of being abused, and then there was my world of nobody can touch me, my fantasy world. Stooge. Goof. He started Stooge. hearing voices. Goof. They called him mean names. Goof. Moron. And sometimes, when he looked into the mirror, scary faces looked back. A child's wild imagination? Perhaps he did manage to graduate from Ryerson with a degree in TV production without too much trouble. But in 1999, at the age of 34, he went to Korea to teach English, and all hell broke loose. I was starting to break down. I thought people were following me. I thought people were trying to kill me. I thought there were people outside my window calling me to go and buy drugs. Andy flew home and was promptly diagnosed with schizophrenia. But he denied his illness, and before long, he was substituting the prescription drugs his doctor gave him with heroin. It was really self-medicating because I couldn't cope. I, I felt like, you know, I was, oh, it was just me. Is this, people are going to discover that I'm a fraud. People are going to discover that I have this disease and I can't cope. I'm not like everybody else. Now, living on the streets of the downtown east side, Andy had become a thief to support his addiction and was incarcerated multiple times. In jail, he dreamed about getting out and shooting up. Seven years ago, he did just that and nearly killed himself. The turning point in many ways was that overdose, but it took some time to sink in, so that eventually I kept thinking about it and going, you know, I overdosed. You know, that ambulance guy was an angel. He saved my life, and I, what am I doing? Another angel was about to enter his life. Sue, the soulmate he thought he'd never find or deserve. She convinced Andy that he was sick, that he should take his medication. From then on in, the possibilities were limitless. <laughs> Uh, my life has changed tremendously. I went from being a homeless drug addict, basically, to a filmmaker, a social change filmmaker. I'll never forget my time living on the 100 block of East Hastings. How could I? Andy has earned the trust of the people who live here and remarkable access to their stories. The result? Graphic yet poignant documentaries. Educational tools are used by schools and universities. It's part of my loop. A sick merry-go-round of hardcore addiction. The down on the side was my hell, but now it's my inspiration. Okay, because now uh, I'm strong enough to go down there and not be worried about having a relapse. I, that, that's not part of my life anymore. Uh, obviously, this little niche that I found is working out for me because people are interested in wanting to know what's happening from someone that's been there. Linda Aylesworth, Global News. This is the Bell Hunter Club. In health news now, a new study out of London suggests light drinking during pregnancy 